A Second Chance The Story of a Near Death Experience Part 2 The Vishnu Dutas Challenge the Yamadutas Chapter 6 The Residence of the Spiritual Sky Shukadeva Goswami continued when the order carriers of Yamaraja, the son of the sun god, were thus forbidden, they replied, Who are you, sirs, that have the audacity to challenge the jurisdiction of Yamaraja? Whose servants are you? Where have you come from? And why are you forbidding us to touch the body of Ajamila? Are you demigods from the heavenly planets? Are you sub-demigods? Or... Are you the best of devotees? Your eyes are just like the petals of lotus flowers. Dressed in yellow silken garments, decorated with garlands of lotuses and wearing very attractive helmets on your heads and earrings on your ears, you all appear fresh and youthful. Your four long arms are decorated with bows and quivers of arrows and with swords clubs, conch shells, discs and lotus flowers. Your effulgence has dissipated the darkness here with extraordinary illumination. Now, sirs, why are you obstructing us? From the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 1, Verses 32 to 36. Divine Interference the sins Ajamila had committed placed him within the jurisdiction of Yamaraja, the supreme judge appointed to consider the sins of the living entities. When forbidden to touch Ajamila, the order carriers of Yamaraja were surprised because within all the three worlds, no one had ever before hindered them in the execution of their duty. The Vishnu Dutas were coming from Vaikuntha and they appeared extraordinary, each with four arms. The servants of Yamaraja immediately received them with respect. They had no idea which planet the Vishnu Dutas had come from, so they simply suggested, You must have come from a very exalted planet, but why are you interfering with our business? We are Yamadutas. It is our duty to arrest every sinful man. And Ajamila has committed misdeeds throughout his life. Now, at the end of his life, we are authorized to take him to Yamaraja, the son of Vivaswan, the sun god. So, why are you preventing us? The most significant word used in verse 32 is Siddha Sattamaha which means the best of the perfect. In the Bhagavad Gita verse 7.3, it is said, Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhaye Out of millions of persons, one may try to become siddha, perfect, or in other words, self-realized. A self-realized person knows that he is not the body, but a spiritual soul. Aham Brahmasmi. At present, almost no one is aware of this fact, but one who understands this has attained perfection and is therefore called Siddha. When one understands that the soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Soul and one thus engages in the devotional service of the Supreme Soul, one becomes Siddha Sattama. One is then eligible to live in Vaikuntha or Krishna Loka. The word Siddha Sattama therefore refers to a pure devotee of the Lord. Since the Yamadutas are servants of Yamaraja, who is also one of the Siddha Sattamas, they knew that a Siddha Sattama is above the demigods and sub demigods and indeed above all the living entities within this material world. The Yamadutas therefore inquired why the Vishnu Dutas were preventing them from carrying out the orders of such an exalted soul as Yamaraja. It should also be noted that Ajamila was not yet dead for the Yamadutas had been stopped before they could snatch the soul from his heart. Ajamila 
was simply on the verge of death as the argument progressed between the Yamadutas and the Vishnu Dutas. The conclusion of that argument was to be a decision regarding who would claim the soul of Ajamila. Spiritual Beauty The Vishnu Dutas exactly resembled Lord Vishnu. The Yamadutas had never seen them before because the Yamadutas stay in an atmosphere where only sinful activities are executed. Therefore, they were astonished at the presence of these beautiful personalities and said, By your bodily features, you appear to be very exalted gentlemen and you have such celestial power that you have dissipated the darkness of this material world with your effulgence. Why then should you endeavour to stop us from executing our duty? It will be explained that Yamadutas, the order carriers of Yamaraja, mistakenly considered Ajamila sinful. They did not know that although he was sinful throughout his entire life, he was purified by constantly chanting the holy name of Narayana. The Vishnudutas were so effulgent because they were residents of the spiritual world where everyone and everything is self-effulgent. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita verse 15.6 Natadbhasayate suryo nashashanko napavakaha My abode is not illuminated by the sun, the moon, fire or electricity. The Yamadutas did not know where the Vishnudutas had come from, but they could see that the Vishnudutas were not ordinary. Since they were so effulgent, they had four arms and they were extremely beautiful. The dress and bodily features of the residents of Vaikuntha are accurately described in these verses. The residents of Vaikuntha who are decorated with garlands and yellow silken garments have four arms holding a disc, flower, club and conch shell. Thus, they exactly resemble Lord Vishnu except for one very prominent feature, the Kaustubha jewel, which the Lord wears on his chest. The residents of Vaikuntha have the same bodily features as Narayana because they have attained the liberation of Sarupya, but they nevertheless act as servants. All the residents of Vaikuntha Loka know perfectly well that their master is Narayana or Krishna and that they are all his servants. They are all self-realized souls who are Nitya Mukta, everlastingly liberated. Although they could conceivably declare themselves Narayana, they never do so. They always remain Krishna conscious and serve the Lord faithfully. Such is the atmosphere of Vaikuntha Loka. Similarly, one who learns the faithful service of Lord Krishna through the Krishna consciousness movement will always remain in Vaikuntha Loka and have nothing to do with the material world. Beyond the material world, in our conditioned state, we cannot know about the spiritual world. But the spiritual world exists. As Lord Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita verse 8.20, Parastasmatu bhavo nyo. Besides this inferior material nature, there is another superior nature. This material nature is one nature comprised of millions and trillions of universes clustered together in one corner of the spiritual sky. We cannot even measure the sky covered by this one universe within which there are innumerable planets. Yet there are millions and trillions of universes in the entire material creation. And the entire material creation is only one-fourth of existence. In other words, this whole material world is existing in one-fourth of Krishna's energy. The other three-fourths comprise the spiritual sky. 
unfortunate persons think that this planet is all in all but this is frog philosophy a frog in a well cannot understand anything beyond the well and he measures everything in terms of his well when he is told about the ocean he cannot imagine it similarly persons with such a frog's mentality imagine god is like this or god's kingdom is like that or i am god or there is no god but this is all foolishness